Following the most recent and epic chapter in the chronicles of LeBron James' career failures, he stepped to the podium and pondered if he has in fact left his final indelible mark for all of us to bear witness to. I had a lot to think about, to be honest, and uh, just for me personally going, going forward with the game of basketball. And the comparisons have been expansive throughout his career to that ghost in Chicago who wore number 23, with virtually every credentialed journalist with a platform tripping over themselves to make some ill-fated goat comparison. LeBron James is number two all time, and Michael Jordan is number one all time. But when you put the magnifying glass on LeBron, he just does a lot more at a much higher level than Ma Michael Jordan. But for once, you truly cannot help but see the parallels to the way Michael Jordan walked it off in Chicago and how LeBron's career might have just concluded in Los Angeles. It has all of a sudden been 25 years ago when rumors and speculation were swirling around the fate of the Chicago Bulls in the looming offseason. But there was still the matter of the 1998 NBA Finals to square away. The Chicago Bulls came limping into the finals after having been just pushed to the brink against the Indiana Pacers and being taken seven games in the Eastern Conference Finals in what constituted one of Michael Jordan's most challenging playoff series. Waiting for them in the finals was a Utah Jazz team with the best record in the NBA, looking to avenge their finals loss to the Bulls a year ago in 1997. And the Jazz, behind Carl Malone's 39 points, 9 rebound, and 5 assist performance in Game 5, would force the series back to Utah for a decisive Game 6 and, if necessary, Game 7 to be played out in Salt Lake City. Pressure was mounting throughout the series as Scottie Pippen's back was ailing. He would score just 6 points on 2 of 16 from the field in that Game 5. And in Game 6 in Utah, he could manage just 8 points in 25 minutes with his back continually seizing up. With it seemingly increasingly likely that Pippen would be extremely limited in a potential Game 7 if he could even play at all, the pressure was on Jordan to seize the moment and close the series out. The Jazz were up 5 at the end of 3, but Jordan would not be denied, scoring 16 of his game-high 45 points in the final stanza. And with only 41 seconds left, the Bulls found themselves down 3 after this John Stockton three-pointer. Cross-court Stockton, a 3! It's there! Jordan would come down the other end and attack the basket immediately, cutting the lead to one. And with 18 seconds remaining, Jordan would display his defensive prowess at the other end of the floor, coming from the blind side to strip Carl Malone and give Chicago one final look at the championship. Jordan, open, Chicago with the lead! And with five seconds left, Jordan would drill this 17-footer, indelibly freezing the image in our memories for all of time, but not to be outdone. The self-proclaimed king and his posse of media jock sniffers were drooling over LeBron's 40-point game in Game 4 against the Denver Nuggets as the chosen one poured in 37 points through three quarters, only to drop a hilarious three points in the fourth quarter on one of six shooting from the field. But after Nikola Jokic made this shot to put the Nuggets up two with 51 seconds left, it was finally the King's turn to take some memorable shots deep in the playoffs, as he has had numerous teammates throughout the course of his playoff career make some iconic shots of their own. LeBron would not be denied in this moment. Coming out of the timeout with under 30 seconds to go, he drilled the side of the backboard, which will assuredly go down in the history books with other various iconic bricks. But the King wasn't done yet. With just four seconds remaining and the Lakers still trailing by just two, he would attack the basket and predictably again for the second time in under 50 seconds, not even touch the basket. It is yet to be seen of whether or not the NBA's biggest drama king will truly ponder retirement this offseason, or if this is just his most recent and pathetic attempt to draw all of the attention onto him. But if he does step away from the game, it is certain that this last indelible moment is a fitting foil 
to the guy in Chicago he could never catch.